If you're wondering whether or not you should update to the latest NVIDIA driver, this video is for you. As you know, yesterday 531.79 was the latest driver to be released by NVIDIA. I did a split screen comparison, I'll link that video at the end of this video. This video is to get an accurate representation of how the driver performs without recording software. So without further ado, sit down, strap in, let's go. So guys, I'm not going to beat around the bush. This is a damn good driver. So just to get started, all my games are tested at medium settings. Where FSR 2.0 or 2.1 was available, I used the quality setting. With the exception of Returnal, my computer is under spec for Returnal, so I used low settings or the low settings preset with FSR set to balance. Everything else is medium on quality. And guys, please, please, please hear this. I test my games on single player games exclusively i don't play multiplayer online shooter games i don't like fps games so your mileage might vary if you do play multiplayer and online games and then just furthermore um i do, obviously i have a gtx 1650 in my laptop so I, this specifically is tested for gtx i know i watched somebody else's uh, video where they compare the drivers they have an rtx card and obviously RTX might uh, 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 perform slightly differently to GTX. So guys, for GTX, the latest driver is the TITS. And I'll get to it. So for 531.68, that was the previous driver. Over nine games, I added up my average FPS. And over nine games, my average, oh, my average FPS totaled to 596. When I divide that by nine, my average FPS per game is 66.2. I do the same thing for the 1% lows, add up all the 1% lows, and then over nine games, my 1% lows were 424, and then I divide that by nine, so my average 1% low per game is 47.11. Uh, and then to see the stability, I divide the 1% lows by the average FPS, and that gives me a stability of 71.12%. It wasn't a terrible driver, wasn't great. And then for the latest driver, which I'm very happy to say, NVIDIA, you did your job. Um, this driver is pretty good. In fact, it's pretty much the best driver this year. Um, so for 531, did the same thing, added up all the average FPSs, got to a total FPS over nine games of 598. And divide that by nine, and my average average FPS per game is 66.44. So you can see the average FPS over these two drivers is very similar. Average FPS isn't really that important to uh, to work out driver performance. It's more the the relationship of one percent lows to average FPS. The smaller the gap, the better the driver performs. Obviously, um, I don't want to spoil that. So. For my average FPS, for 531.79, my average FPS per game is 66.44. I did the same thing for the 1% lows, added up all the 1% lows, and my total FPS, or my total 1% lows over 9 games is 448. You can see, quite a bit higher than um, the 1% lows for the previous driver. And then when I divide that by 9, my average 1% low per game is 49.78. And then when I divide the 1% lows by the average FPS, it gives me a stability percentage for the driver of 74.92%, which is pretty freaking good comp uh, if you consider the, the shit that NVIDIA has been pushing out lately. So well done NVIDIA, you released a good driver. Woo! But we're not done yet. So guys, I've been singing the praises of 528.02 for the longest time. It is a bit of a a pain in the ass that you have an old driver that performs well so the fact that there's a new driver that performs well i actually recommend 531.79 above and beyond 528.02 because if you've got a, a new driver that performs as well as the previous best old driver it's always best you just default to the new driver and i'll show you why i say that 
because I also just tested 528.02. So, same thing here, added up all the 1% lows, uh, all the average FPSs. My total FPS over 9 games was 605. So you can see it's a little bit higher in terms of average FPS. Divide by 9, and my average FPS per game is 67.22. And then when I div uh, added up all the 1% lows, uh, my 1% lows were 449. Divided by 9 is 49.89. So guys, what you can see here is it's got higher average FPS, but the 1% lows are exactly, well, one, one higher for this driver. But the 1% lows are practically the same for these two drivers. So the fact that this has got higher FPS, but the same 1% lows as 531.79, obviously means that 531.79 is more stable because there's a smaller gap between the 1% lows and the average FPS. Yeah, the, there's a bigger gap between the average FPS and the 1% lows. So it goes to follow that 528.02, which was my go-to driver for the longest time, the, the stability percentage, when you divide the 1% lows by the average FPS is 74.22%. So it's not massively better, but it's a half a percent more stable. Uh, the latest driver is half a percent more stable than 528.02. So guys, if you want my recommendation, update your NVIDIA driver to the latest driver. It's the king and it slayed the previous king, 528.02. So well done NVIDIA, 531.79 is an awesome driver. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section. If you're still watching and you haven't subscribed as of yet, now's the time to do so. Guys, I'm going to be launching memberships, I think, latest tomorrow. And the first level is going to be very entry-level membership perks. But the second level is going to give you access to my Discord server, which is 24-7 non-stop support. So be on the lookout for that. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. It's people like you. Cheers.